Welcome to an episode of Jay Leno's Garage. As you know, we're huge motorcycle enthusiasts here at the shop. And uh, what we have here are a couple of what appear to be vintage triumphs from the 60s, but uh, looks can be deceiving. What if we could have a vintage triumph from the 60s look with modern triumph uh, running gear? Well, that's what we have here, thanks to a company called uh, Champion Moto. Richard Varn is the president. Champions Moto is the name of the company, correct? Good morning, Jay. How, How are you doing? How are you? Good to good, see good you. Good to see you, too. You know, I've got uh, a 64 Bonnie, and I've got a 70 Bonnie. I love the early Triumphs with the 650. What you've done here is captured that look, but uh, with the modern Triumph running gear, correct? That's correct. That's correct. All right, so you start with, and you're carbureted. I know the new ones are, are injected, correct? That's correct, too. So you use the, what, the first series motors? We use the first series motors on these, and, and the whole sort of design thesis behind this was, um, I used to collect old Triumphs as well. Right. And I wanted a bike that was going to be light and up to date, and, and we were going to use, or I tried to find a Trackmaster frame, and right. you go through that whole process, and we're going to build the motor up, but when you start kicking these things over, and, you ha you know, and they start leaking oil, <laughs> and you want something that's pretty reliable, and you want something that's got some uh, sport to it. So I, I went back and looked at the old Bonneville motors, and then the new Bonneville motors, and you know, the, the visual is, is very similar. The design of the motor is very similar as well, because they're parallel twins, right. and, they both, and they both rise and fall together. So it made a lot of sense, I thought, to, to develop a frame to, uh, to, to use that original style motor uh, but with modern performance. Well, this is my favorite Triumph engine they do. I've got one of the triples, which I like yes. a lot. But this one is my favorite only because it has the look and feel of the early bike. Uh, you know, the 650 Triumph they built from uh, the 50s right up until, what? Uh, Mid-70s. Mid-70s. Uh, fantastic bikes. I remember there was a tag on the tank that said, for the expert rider only. <laughs> and when you're 16 years old, don't have your license yet. Well, of course, you're an expert. That's, that's the one well, I want. And the 650 was a big bike then, too. That seemed hugely fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seemed so incredibly fast, and it seemed so impressive with the two carburetors sticking out the side. Yeah, the, it rides your legs a little bit over. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was, it was fantastic. So I never got over that look and the big drum, drum brake in the front, which you've recreated here as well. We correct? did this because uh, when we looked at the cafe racers, there was maybe three generations. Uh, there was the original, the, the Gold Star, right. Bellisette, sort of a Clubman racer type of look. And then in the late, six, uh, late 50s, early 60s, they would, uh, they'd take a, a Norton frame and put a Triumph motor in it. Right, right. Called them Tritons. And so, and then, then um, Rickman came along later right. on and built really kind of the first purpose-built cafe racer. So this is sort of an homage to that, to that early 60s where you had a, um, a, a drum front brake on it, like right. Gromeca in this case. This, uh, Gromeca still builds these. So they had a Gromeca or a, um, uh, a Fontana. Right. Four leading shoe. And these things stop great. They, yeah. they work great. Uh, and so we, we said, let's set it up that way. Well, this is very European looking. And these two, of course, this is very American looking. This That's is, right. This is what I remember Dick Mann and those kind of guys. Gene Romero, Dick Mann, right? the whole group. Sure, sure. And of course, this one here, which almost looks like a Speedway bike. It is. And, and this was actually the first bike we built. Uh, we had a design uh, thesis on this one of 300 pounds. And we went through the motors. And uh, we got about 50% more power of it. It's a, it's, a, it's a true truck motor. I mean, this thing has a bottom end that's really robust. <laughs> you can do a lot with the top end of it, too. Five speed? Uh, five speed, that's right. Five correct. speed, okay. And this, of course, is just a classic Southern California. That's right. Yeah. This was more of a, a styling exercise for us. Uh, we're working with the uh, fellows at SoCal Speed Shop, Jimmy Shine and Pete Shapiris. And we went through a whole clay modeling exercise with it. And it's a lot of fun to ride. And it's, um, it's and no speedometer, no gauges. No, so you, officer, I don't know how fast I was going. That's correct. Yeah. In fact, once I was on my Vincent, and the Vincent has the big 150 mile an hour speedometer here, mm -hmm. and I was going down the road, and whoo, ah, cop pulls me over. He goes, now how fast are you going? I said, no, you're going 92. I said, I had no idea. He said, I clocked it off your speedometer. <laughs> I was right behind you. I saw your speedometer. It said 92. That's right. <laughs> I went, oh, OK. <laughs> so he had me. Well, it had to be that big from the vibration, yeah. too, probably. And the little tiny filler tank here, very nicely That's done. That's right. Uh, look at the hand welds in there. Nice, nice welds in there as well. And uh, what is this? About a one gallon, one and a half gallon tank? We match the seat and the tank on this one. With that seat, that's about as far as you want to go. Right. Yeah. So it's, uh, it, but it's, it's really kind of a flat track style motorcycle. Sure. And uh, it's very light. A lot of titanium on this bike. And uh, it's about a two gallon tank. Did they ever have a tire that big back in the day? They're a little smaller in cross section, but yeah. the, but the diameter is the right diameter. Yeah. And, uh, 
they didn't, of course, with the, with the flat trackers, didn't run the front brake at all. Right. So what would I do? I, would I bring my bike to you and you would convert my bike? Or we can, do you sell the whole package? We can do the whole package. We can sell you a roller and let you do it. I see. Or we can convert a bike for you if you, okay. wish, if you wish to do that as well. So we've done some of that already. And, it's, it's, and we also make parts. So in the old flat track style, the, the, they wanted to narrow the cases. So we've changed the cases. Right. We've put a, a hydraulic clutch actuator in here. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the stock Triumph has a pretty broad motor on it. So we, we uh, narrowed it up quite a bit. We have a whole head package and cam package that can go in these as well. Uh, electronic ignition, mappable. There's quite a bit of things we can do with it. Yeah, that. nicely done. Yeah. And you could get the drum brake on this one if you wanted. You could, yes. Right. But we felt like keeping in style, we, we wanted to put the disc on this one too. Yeah, I got to admit, this one's my favorite because it's just more my era. It's more the street bike. We, uh, we get a pretty broad um, group of people that like uh, the different styles. I mean, this one is bare bones. Right, right. And this is going up and down Coast Highway. This one's a little bit more stylish. But I remember when I was a kid riding a bike with a front fender with an open face helmet going out a corner going, let me take a look. I'm just getting a face full of mud from the front wheel. So I've, I've kept the front fender on, on Road mine. construction's not good. Yeah, road construction's not good. Yeah, very good. Nicely done. Thank you. And you got the Southern California speed shop thing going there. Right. Boy, they're beautiful bikes. You do them all right here in California. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we use a fabricator, Richard Pollock, that does the work for us. He's, okay. he's excellent. Um, and it's, it's I mean, if a, I brought my 2008 Bonnie to you and said, make it look like this, what, what would it run me about? Uh, about 37,000. Wow, okay, okay. But, but you're going to get an 80 horsepower motorcycle. This right. one's about 340 pounds. Right. So it's, it's light and you get a lot of performance just out of the, out of the weight. Right. Uh, weight reduction. And beautiful tank. Yeah. This is a, a mid 70s uh, home market uh, Triumph tank. So okay. this one has expanded a little bit. We can still find these and move them out. Yeah. Right. These are, in fact, this has the same tail cone as the one next to us and the same side. Uh, covers as well. I remember when I was a kid, one of the Triumph dealers saying to me, you need to go 7,000 miles before you have to take the head off this thing. That's right. And that was the selling point. <laughs> wow, 7,000 miles before you have to take the entire thing apart. Wow, that's pretty good, you know. These, um, again, have electronic ignition, which has uh, been a real help. We've changed the flywheels on them so we can reprogram how they, how right. they wind up, and it's, that's been a, a major change. And us. stock displacement? Uh, stock on this, year, this era is an 865cc. Right. And they've carried that. The original bike is a 790. Right. And that's uh, But, I mean, uh, you keep stock displacement. That's right, because right. we okay. want to keep the reliability. And so we right. change the heads, we change the cams. We have a little bit higher compression, but we don't go into stroking them, and we don't, we don't go uh, bigger on the bore. At some point... The motors get too big for the for the bike. What carburetors are those? These are Keens uh, okay. flat slides. Oh, okay. So we they're we increase the size of the of the uh, of the carburetor too. Right. And the exhaust pipes too. And obviously you can run it on pump gas Absolutely. because you haven't changed mm -hmm. anything. And here you're not running any. How loud is this? Can we... this one's not too bad because it's got baffles. I mean, it's surprising. Uh, you you put the 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 baffles in here. Want to start it? Yeah, I just I'm curious how loud it is. Nicely done. And yet, boy, you know, I like an air-cooled motor. I mean, I, I, I realize water cooling is the wave of the future and all that kind of stuff, but it's just so nice and maintenance-free. And you got to, this one, this one has an oil cooler. They both have oil coolers, and, and they're using oil to cool these as Where's well. Where's the oil cooler on this one? This one's all the way down at the bottom underneath. Oh, there it is. I see. That's been, okay. that's been kind of a, an issue with these bikes in terms of style. Yeah. Uh, you see um, people are trying to do something with the oil cooler. We actually uh, have created a part for the stock Bonneville where we took the oil cooler off and we uh, run the oil through the subframe, the front subframe, the down tubes. Gotcha. And yeah. It cleans up the bike uh, dramatically. Yeah. So, oh, oh this, that, that doesn't look bad no, to me. That doesn't seem intrusive. I like that Earl style better yeah. than I do the, the one that they have that's stock that's a big flat blade yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's not, it's just kind of stuck on there. It's not really of any. Uh, uh, design ap uh, appeal. This one sounds quite a bit different if you yeah. want. Yeah, you let's hear that one. Let's okay. hear that one start. This one. Boy, oh, that's a torquey motor.
you know, much like the Lotus Elan and some of the cars, there's nothing like a lightweight, skinny bike. It's, they just don't make that stuff anymore. No, they don't. You know, when I talk to guys about cars, they think a lightweight car is 3,000 pounds. And then you show them a Lotus Elan at 1,400, and they, it, it's like a revelation. Whereas this, I mean, it's just so maneuverable. You know, it's unbelievable. Yeah, people just used to big bikes with big, wide pieces on, you know, this thing you could you could pick it up and put in the back of a truck if you had to. You slide over, you put your leg over and it, it runs all yeah. day long and it's it's a lot of fun. It's a great bike. And this seat, it, I, I guess you could, uh, legally it's a seat. Legally isn't it? it's a yeah, seat. Yeah, yeah. I would call it a board <laughs> or a two by four, but it's it's a seat. It's a seat. And, uh, but just the idea that you're right out here and. It's simple. Yeah. I mean, you just see both sides. I'm used to so many bikes that have Big. All this here, where you're just like this all the time. You know, this is great for lane splitting and cutting through traffic. And when the cops are chasing down the alley, right, boom, there you That's go. Right. Nicely done. But it always feels to me like the, the simpler it is, the, the, the more yeah. the essence yeah. it Yeah, well, it's just such a nice, clean look to it. Battery, everything's right there. And that's an aluminum wheel, right? It's aluminum wheel, titanium spokes. Right. The hubs are a little bit different because we originally ran tubeless tires on this to keep the, the uh, unsprung weight down. Right. But these actually have hubs that uh, are, are um, threaded and have O-rings on, the, on right. the nipples, and so you're able to run a, a yeah. tubeless tire. And it's nice to see a wire wheel again. You know, so many modern bikes have metal Absolutely. wheel, cast wheel. It, it's fun to see just, it, it takes you a second to get acclimated. Oh, yeah, that's right, a classic look to it. And I like the larger wheels, too. Yeah. A lot of the, 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 the motocross bikes or the performance bikes now are running a smaller diameter wheel. And I think the larger wheel has a, a lot better look. I like the... For these bikes, I like the original pattern, yeah. tire pattern as well. To the young people, this is what a proper motorcycle should look like. I bet they go nuts for this in England. I'd be curious to see what our English friends who watch the website, what their reaction is to it, because it seems very English in its style and its feeling. I think we're going to actually have one of these go to England here pretty oh, soon. Oh, very cool, so, very so cool. This is sort of that uh, mod rocker type deal. That's what we it? call it, the Brighton. Is the yeah, name of yeah, it. that's great, that's great. Never got the mod thing, more of a rocker. Uh, me too. Yeah, the mod thing didn't quite, yeah, yeah. With the silly scooter. Well, with Brighton. The, yeah, yeah. Lousy that. beach, lousy food, but a great place for a fight. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> great place for a fight. Let's, uh, let's take this for a ride. how torquey this motor is and all kinds of power. You know, it's really smooth for a parallel twin. I've got a couple of old Bonnies. I've got a 64 and a 69. And both the tack and the speedo are doing this when you're going down the road. This doesn't have a tack or a speedo, so it doesn't do that. But it, it doesn't vibrate either. It's very smooth and way more powerful than any Bonneville from the 60s ever was. Look at this torque. Time I get to drive a new Triumph, it's a treat. This is a sharp looking bike, it's a lot of fun, so I want to thank the guys at Champions Mono, Moto for uh, letting me, let me ride it. It was a lot of fun. We'll see you guys next week.